Hi everybody, my name is Nisha and I am the founder and instructor here at LaBelle Hair Company. Our mission is to help women regain their inner confidence. If you are looking at this video, that means you watched the first video. If you haven't, the link will be in the description for you to go and look at part one. Picking up where we left off, we ended up discussing where the client actually decided to cut. In this video, we're gonna show you what she decided to remove and how we were able to work with her decision. The main thing that I do want to stress when it comes to being a stylist as well as having that type of trust with the client is understanding that everyone is not going to want to start their hair care journey 100%. And what I mean by that is everyone doesn't have the confidence to remove all of the damage that is actually present. And that's perfectly fine. If that is the case and you find yourself in that scenario, honestly, my recommendation or my advice is to really just let them know, hey, if you're only going to cut off an inch today, but in reality you need to cut off four inches, be mindful that we're gonna do what you want us to do, but you still have to make sure that you're remaining consistent because we don't want any more damage to become present that's not already there, okay? We wanna make sure that we're taking care of the damage that's there and not having to add on to that damage. So with that being said, we're gonna jump right into it. This is the before of how my client actually started her hair care journey. As you can see, the breakage is present as well as the split ends. She has length, but it's really just all see-through hair. You can see through it like a newspaper. This photo here is going to show you where she ended up cutting. So she ended up removing the breakage and split ends that were present on her hair. So she was okay with coming with the big chop. Again, I discuss all of this with my clients. I make sure that they're in 100% agreement with what it is that I'm about to do. I never cut too much or I never remove anything that the client hasn't agreed upon removing. And therefore that allows me to continue to build that trust with them. What we ended up doing was we ended up placing her on a strict regimen and went over her consultation which let us know what her hair history was and also her overall health history. Now, in terms of her hair regimen, it included us having to make sure that we're providing the proper moisture that she actually needs. Her regimen included her actually coming to the salon every two weeks, right? So she came twice a month because there's four weeks in a month. With her coming every two weeks, first we started off with her receiving her protein and moisture treatment. Again, quick disclaimer. Every product that is used for my client's transitional journey is from LaBelle Hair Company. There are certain products that are available for retail, but then there are other higher grade of products that are only available for salon professionals. I will be letting you know exactly what products are used during each client's transitional journey, but again, just be mindful. Some are available for the public to purchase, others you have to be a licensed professional to purchase them. Going back into the story, Included in my client's regimen, we had to make sure her hair was receiving the proper amount of moisture that she needed because she wasn't used to having that moisture and also her hair's overall strength was very weak. She was experiencing brittle hair as well. That meant that we needed to build her actual hair strands back up. So what we ended up doing was we put her on a protein treatment which helps with your hair's overall strength. Again, the protein treatment is from LaBelle Hair Care Professional, as well as the moisture treatment. We provided her with the protein treatment and the moisture treatment every two weeks for four sessions, okay? So in her case, that would have been, she would have been on protein and moisture for two months. Once we were able to build back her hair's overall strength, we ended up putting her on a regular journey, which consisted of her receiving her protein treatment every four to six weeks, which normally that's recommended for anyone who has healthy, the average healthy 
<clears throat> hair stay. Now, when I'm speaking in terms of protein treatments, I'm not speaking in terms of what you use at home. I'm speaking specifically in terms of the salon grade, okay? This is what salon professionals use. Depending on the type of breakage or the type of damage that you actually have, that is going to cause for you to not only need to see a professional, but to have professional products used on you, okay? There's only also much that you are gonna be able to do at home, and you really have to keep that in mind. Again, going back to her hair care journey, what we ended up doing was, with her being on the hydration regimen, she saw me every two weeks, so that was two times a month. We included her protein treatments as well as her moisture treatments. And also she received her trim every three months. And normally that's what I would recommend anyways for the average person who has healthy hair is for a trim to be done every three months. The purpose of a trim is to stop the um, split ends from evolving, okay? That's why you're going to get a trim. Just because you're getting a trim doesn't mean that it's going to make your hair grow faster, okay? Cutting your hair does not make it grow faster. You have to really understand that when it comes to your hair growing, it goes through three growing cycles, three phases. Those three phases, the first phase is gonna be the antigen cycle. And the antigen cycle is your growing phase. The growing phase can really just vary between each individual. Everyone's growing phase sometimes is longer than someone else's, which is why sometimes you'll see in certain videos or hair progress, or hair journeys, you'll see people say that they were able to accumulate this, am this amount of hair in six months or three months. That's because their antigen phase is longer than the average person. The next phase is going to be the catagen phase. The catagen phase is the hair's resting phase. This is where the hair no longer grows, it just rests, okay? During the resting phase, that's going to be where all type of movement just stops, okay? This is going to last anywhere between like one or two weeks. Um, and then after the catagen phase is the telogen phase. The telogen phase is the shedding phase. Going back to what you guys probably already know, every hair sheds, okay? Your hair probably sheds about 100 strands a day. So when you are combing your hair, if you're seeing a couple of strands in the brush or in the comb falling out of your hair, don't be alarmed. That doesn't mean that your hair is coming out. The only time that you should really be alarmed is when there are clumps of your hair coming out, okay? That's where it becomes an issue, but you have to remember all hair sheds. With that being said, the telogen phase, sometimes it varies because some people's telogen phase actually happens at the same time that their antigen phase happens. Meaning, even though their hair is going through a shedding phase, it's also going through a growth phase as well. So with that being said, you have to remember, everyone's phases are different. Their time frame within those phases varies, which is why you'll see some people have major progress within six months or three months, and then you'll see others, it may be slow and steady progress. That's why I always tell my clients, don't base your hair journey off the next person's hair journey because how their hair is is completely different than how yours is. Also keeping in mind that just because products worked on one person doesn't necessarily mean that the products will work on you. Um, another thing that was included into her hair regimen was the fact that she had to make sure that she stayed hydrated because moisture was a really big challenge for her. She wasn't used to drinking a lot of water and that caused not only her body to be dehydrated, but her skin was dehydrated, dehydrated as well, as well as her scalp and as well as her hair. So she had to make sure that she was drinking enough water as well as um, consuming the fruits and vegetables that she needed to consume and um, take her supplements. In this case, we put her on biotin. Now, with biotin, some people have mixed reviews. Some people say biotin um, causes them to have a breakout. Everybody's side effects are different, so you definitely wanna make sure that you figure out what actually works for you because not everybody can do the same thing. And also, you guys have to understand that when it comes to your hair care journey or your hair growth journey, whatever you wanna call it, you have to be consistent and you have to be patient, okay? Just because you started doing something one time doesn't mean that you're instantly gonna see results. Sometimes it takes 30 to 60 days, sometimes it takes 90 days. And when it comes to strengthening your hair, it can take at least 60 days for your hair to be the actual strength that it needs to be, okay? So again, it takes time. None of this actually happens overnight. The process that you guys are seeing was from, she started coming to see me in November, and the photo that I showed you was her up to date, and that was as of June, I believe. And this is the progress that she made. It's been a really good journey that she's embarked on. In addition to us staying on top of her hydration that she's needed, we're making sure that we're keeping an eye out for other things as well, because as we all know, things change. Your day-to-day -day life activities can play a part on your hair and health as well. 
it can be something as simple as her becoming stressed out, which can cause her to lose hair. So not only am I making sure that she's staying on top of her regimen, but I'm also making sure that each time she comes to her hair appointment, I'm analyzing her hair, making sure that everything is the way that it's supposed to be. So in case there is some type of disruption, I can catch it beforehand before the damage is already done or before the damage is detrimental. So the main goal is to always make sure however you came to the appointment the very first time at your very first appointment, we make sure you never have to get back to that point because we can go ahead and stop the damage from occurring to that extreme. I'm now going to go into the tips on how you can actually make sure that you prevent damage or prevent breakage and prevent split ends. The main cause of split ends is because of dehydration. So you wanna make sure that you're properly hydrating your hair. And the main thing that you wanna do when it comes to properly hydrating your hair, you wanna make sure that you're using a hydrating shampoo. The way that you'll be able to know if you are using hydrating products is sometimes hydration is put on the bottle or moisture is in the name of the actual um, system. But in the case that it's not, pay attention to the back of the bottle, which has the ingredients listed on there. If water is the very first ingredient, then that means that the highest concentration is going to be water. Ingredients are listed in a descending order. So with water being the first ingredient, then you already know that, okay, this is a moisture-based product. I need moisture because my hair is dehydrated. Another thing that you have to watch out for is making sure that things are sulfate-free as well as paraben-free. Um, SLS free and alcohol free because as we all know alcohol can actually dry your hair out those are just things to keep in mind for um, when you are purchasing products as well as knowing your hair type and texture another tip is going to be when it comes to your shampoo process you need to be making sure that you're properly shampooing your hair and also applying the conditioner generously you have to remember when it comes to your hair once your hair actually grows out of your scalp it is no longer living it is dead hair. So when your hair comes out of the cuticle, it's no longer being provided the actual nutrients that your body naturally provides because naturally your body provides its own nutrients, right? But it's just as you get older, the, um, the level, the production level sometimes decreases, which means that you have to now go into getting supplements from other things externally. So now you're in charge of that. But in that case, you have to understand that when it comes to your hair, your hair strands are made up of 20 amino acids. 11 of those amino acids are naturally produced, meaning your body naturally produces them. That means the remaining nine amino acids have to be provided by you. And how you're able to provide it to your body is it's from what you actually consume, what you eat. So when you start to notice that your hair is becoming brittle, breakage is starting to happen, your hair is starting to thin out, that means that you're missing amino acids that you're supposed to be providing. That's where these hair challenges come into play. And that all goes back to me saying sometimes the reason why you're experiencing a hair challenge can be a result of something that's going wrong with you internally. Again, going back to what the hair strands are actually made up of. With um, it being the 20 amino acids and you having to make sure that you provide the remaining nine from what you consume and then also with you drinking water and everything, this is where your shampoo process as well as your conditioning process is going to play a part as well. And the reason why I say that is because a lot of people feel as though they shouldn't use a lot. And if they have thick hair, they're running through product too much. That means they're using too much. That is, the, the thing is, depending on the type of hair that you have, that can very may well be true. But also something that plays a part in it is these product that you're using. If the product that you're using is not for your hair type and texture, then you're using it for no reason. So putting that into um, perspective, I'll give you an example. If you're someone who has fine hair, but you're using a product that's heavily concentrated for someone who has thick hair, if you apply the product to your fine hair, what's going to happen? Your hair is going to become weighed down. It's gonna become stringy looking. It's not gonna have any type of movement to it. And you want movement. But the reason being, you don't understand that the product that you're actually using is too heavy for your hair. Just like if we're gonna reverse it, someone with thick, dense hair using a product that's for someone with fine hair, it's gonna feel as though they didn't put anything to their hair. Their hair isn't moisturized, their hair still feels dry. It's because you did not use the correct type of product for your hair. And that's really what I want people to understand. When you know your hair, 
then you start to understand what type of products that you're going to use when it comes to your hair because not everything is gonna work for your hair. So that's very important. That's what I tell my clients. Going back to the tip with the shampoo and conditioning process, you're making sure that you're applying a generous amount of shampoo and when you, um, I'm sorry, conditioner. And when you're applying the conditioner, you're making sure that you're heavily saturating your mid shaft and your ends. Because remember, your roots are still a part of your scalp. So naturally, your scalp is going to produce the nutrients that your roots need. It's everything outside of your roots that needs that external moisture. That's where the conditioner comes into play. That's where the treatments come into play. You have to make sure that you are properly saturating your hair because if you're not, and you're walking around and you're thinking that your shampoo process is correct, then you're wondering why your hair is breaking off. You're wondering why your hair is brittle. You're wondering why your hair is dry. And it's because you're not properly shampooing it. A lot of people feel like they know how to shampoo their hair when in reality they don't. Honestly, with me, what I tell my clients, if it takes you five minutes to shampoo your hair, and when I say shampoo, I mean that includes the shampoo process and the conditioner process, you're doing it wrong you're not hydrating anything. It takes time. And especially if you're someone who has long, thick hair, long and or thick hair, it's gonna take you even longer. There's no reason why it should take you five minutes to shampoo your hair. You're not properly moisturizing it. So you're doing it wrong if it's only taking you five minutes. Aside from that, another tip, like I was telling you before, hydration, water, making sure you're drinking water. Water is gonna play a big part in your overall hair health as well, as well as your body too. You gotta make sure that you're staying hydrated. On top of that, making sure you're using leave-ins, making sure you're using moisturizers. It's, it's a lot. It, the list goes on and on and on and on. It's a lot, but really once you find the products that work for you and once you have the right hairstylist in your corner that's going to assist you on the journey because the journey is not easy. It is a lot, especially if you're someone that's coming from doing the bare minimum to your hair. Now you're having to stay on track with this regimen. It's a lot, but it's worth it in the end. Once you see the results, then everything is going to really become second nature and you're not gonna wanna do anything else. So you definitely want to make sure that you're paying attention to your hair and you're providing the hair with the necessary um, nourishments that it actually needs, as well as using the correct products. You can cause breakage to your hair from improper use of heat. Make sure you're using uh, heat protectant. There's no reason why you should be using any type of styling tool and you're not using any type of heat protectant. You're just asking for damage. So you really have to do the research. And if you're not allowed to, if you can't do the research and you don't understand, then go to someone that specializes in what it is that you wanna know. Ask them questions so they could provide that education for you. Because without it, you're really just like a deer in headlights. You don't know what's going on. You're just waiting to get hit, so. Honestly, that's really just the moral of the story. For you guys that actually tuned in, thank you. I really do appreciate it. This is the fourth video that we dropped on the channel and we have a lot more education, a lot more behind the scenes, a lot of tips and tricks to show you guys. We really do appreciate you sticking it out with us. If you guys have any questions, please feel free to comment them in the question box. If you have any topics that you want us to touch on, let us know because we'll do videos answering those questions for you. Again, remember, we're here for you. We're here to provide you with the education that you need. We're here to help you regain that confidence, that inner confidence that you have. Because a lot of people don't understand that when it comes to your hair, that plays a part in your self-esteem. Your hair is your crown. And when your hair is looking good, you're feeling good. And when you feel good internally, you do th good things externally. So always keep that in mind. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe. Thank you for watching. We appreciate you and we will see you next time. Bye.